<clears throat> we want to welcome the uh, Robotic Society of uh, Riverside Robotic Society, uh, the uh, RSSC Robotic Society of Southern California and the Tech Room. This is a joint group, joint meeting of all three. So uh, welcome. And tonight we have uh, a floating head, it looks like. <laughs> uh, Thomas, uh, he's going to present his second lecture on um, the uh, AIML chatbot authoring uh, with Alice and um, Easy Robot. And uh, hello, Tim. <laughs> uh, so um, this is a, a, an interesting tool. We were able to follow along last time. And uh, you, if you downloaded or saw the info, you can probably follow along this time. So uh, Thomas, without further ado, the floor is yours. All right, can you hear me OK? It's a little bit um, echoey. Or I'm in an echoey room. Yeah. Maybe don't go too close to the mic, or it, if it, it's a it, reverb happens if you're too loud or something. Is that better? Yeah. Okay, I want to post something here for people who want to follow along. Just let me change my background. Can you see that? Let me get my face out of the way. So yeah. If you want to follow along, on this, you need to download the Easy Builder, the ARC. They call it both right now Easy Builder and ARC, ARC, the ARC installer. So follow that URL. Does somebody want to post that in the uh, text box, the message box there for us? Jim, can you do that? Sure. Let's see, chat. And you download the ARC, the ARC installer, and you install it and you start it. And then you have to install the skill, the AIML BOT skill. Perhaps I should go through. How many people want to follow along tonight that don't have it set up? Let's, let's just get that out of the way. If Give me a thumbs up if you want to see how to follow along. If you have nobody, we'll just go down with the lecture. Anybody want to follow along that doesn't have this set up? Give me the thumbs up in the reactions. I have it set up from, but I, it, since last time they updated some stuff, and you had to, you had to update your arc and your, um, and the plugin. Yeah, yeah, I know. Some some weird script error comes up and but then at the top it says you probably need to update <laughs> oh, well hopefully it works for me tonight yeah if you haven't run it though in a well if you've run it recently you're fine i ran it last night so i guess i should be okay yeah. my window updated last night so you never know okay so nobody else wants to add it in and follow along. So we're going to move ahead. Let me just change my background. Hi, Thomas. Is the application only for Windows? Um, they may have another installer, but I'm not sure. I've only used it in Windows. I'm okay. going to guess yes at this point, but they want to expand it to um, Linux and um, and it's and, and Macintosh or Apple. Okay, Apple. I'm at the website and I only see Windows download. Okay, thank you. Well, they may not have gotten that far then. All right. You don't have a Windows machine, I take it. No, just uh, Mac and Linux. All right. 
Well, I don't know what to do at this point. I, they kept telling me they're going to expand it, but I don't know. I talked to the founder of the company oh, a couple of weeks ago. He gave a lecture. Anyway, moving along, let's start the lecture here. And let me share my screen. Can everyone see that? Yes, no? yes, yes. Okay. And you never know what everyone's seeing because I only see myself in the monitor. All right, building an AI chatbot. We do call this artificial intelligence. It's a, what are they calling it? A nearest neighbor situation. So um, it's not using neural nets. It's using, well, you'll see if you haven't seen this before. With or without a robot. And I am Thomas Messerschmidt. And this is part two. So we're talking about the Alice chatbot. Alice stands for the Artificial Linguistic Internet Computer Entity. This is a review from last time, last month. So it was written in Java and configured in a markup language that's called AIML, the Artificial Intelligence Markup Language. It gives your robot a personality. Instead of just having a robot that moves around, it uh, allows your robot to respond. It's like uh, an extension of the personality that Dr. Bruce tried to give to Leap, if you remember the Leap robot. It was created by Dr. Richard Wallace in 1995. It won the Loebner Prize for the most human-like chatbot. But unfortunately, it never passed the Turing test. Jim, am I still echoey? That sounds OK. It just, uh, you know, it's OK. I'm in an echoey room. That's half the problem. I have to avoid my nieces. They're three and four years old, and they make a heck of a lot of noise. It's more of a reverb right now, as long as you don't yell in the mic or something. All right. AIML is easy to learn. It's open source, and it can be run locally or in the cloud on pandorabots.com. It's been around, well, obviously more than 20 years and has a lot of examples and tutorials. And if you want to follow along, again, easyrobot.com, easy builder. Download it, install it, start it, install the AIML bot skill. Open the folder, make a copy of 5.aiml, and rename it because you're going to edit this file later and move the, all the other files to a different folder. It always tries to run all the AIML files that are in its directory. So if you don't want it to run something, you have to hide it. And then you'd be ready. So last time we covered the basics of AIML categories patterns, 
templates, random function, lists, and star. This time we're going to cover SR AI, set, get, that, and topic. Just a short demo on what it can do. A lot of you have seen this demo, so please bear with me. Can you hear that? Jim, can you hear that? Yeah, it's a little hard to understand it. I'll turn up the volume, see if that helps. Can you see the screen? Yeah, I see. Hello. Hi there. How are you? I'm doing fine, thanks. How are you? I'm doing well. That's good to hear. What's new? Not much. Not much. Okay, it's stuck and that's okay, because that's about it. You can see some of the shortcomings of the software. Basically, I'm using Bing speech recognition. It's going out to the web, sending my audio and it's coming back. It's being fed into a voice, a speech synthesizer. And I have a voice called Amy that I bought from Sepstro. Amy costs $40. Sepstro has a large number of voices you can add to your PC for about uh, $40 each. Um, I have the AIMOBOT still here, and that's where all the AIML is being run up here. I can type things in too. My logic and cognitive functions are all in. And Bing works most of the time. What time is it? Like I said, most of the time. <laughs> All right. Well, that's enough of that for now. So let's review categories, patterns, and templates. The category, oops, can you see my pointer? Yeah. Okay. The category is a set of input and output. You have an input called the pattern, and it's something, it could be as simple as how are you, and the output is called the template. And the response could be, I am fine. And why didn't they call it input and output? I don't know. But every bit of knowledge has to be in a tag called category. Start category, end category. And every document you create has to start with AIML tag and an end AIML tag. So this is your basic AIML file with one unit of knowledge. So category is not what you think of as category, like a broad category. Category is one, one instance of knowledge, one input and output pair. And if I may add to that, if you were here last month, the output actually can have several different outputs and have a random of any N number of outputs. Any questions before we move along? Nope. Okay. Just shout them out. I can't see everyone's face. I don't have I don't have my video set up. There. Let me see if I can. Okay. Eight. What, Thomas? You can't hear me, Nod? Sorry about that. 
All right, moving right along. So today we're going to start with SRAI, or symbolic reduction AI. What it is, is it's what we use to create synonyms for other categories. You can say, how are you? But there's a lot of ways to say, how are you? You can say, how are you? Or what's up? Or sup? Or how's it going? There's probably, what, five or 10 average ways of saying hello, or how are you? And so we got to create synonyms so we don't have so we don't have this thing 20 times as long as it needs to be. And this is what this tag is going to help us do. Let me give you an example here. Initiating the Gnomes AI ML code. The Gnomes is online. Hi, Thomas. What's up? Neat. So here's my AI ML folder. And here's all the things that my chatbot can say. Some of these are really tiny. And by tiny, I mean they have less than 100 lines here, 100, as we say, categories. And some of them are huge. This has over 500, it's over 500K. And you can see it just goes on and on and on. <laughs> and on and on. You gotta wonder how long it took this guy to write all this. He says that he recorded a lot of people's conversations. Here's something about cows. You know, what color are cows, okay? Every robot should know what color are cows. Or what color are sheep? That was the one that uh, I just mentioned in the, that the, the that main chatbot would say, black and white, but yeah. it's really just white. Well, and here the answer is, it depends on the cow. And then it sets the topic to cows. So for now, for this class, I'm gonna take all these and move them to here. So the AI ML interpreter won't try to use them. And this was going to be, let's see, six. Why do you want to do that, Thomas? Because otherwise the AI ML interpreter will use that data. And I don't want to use that data. I just want to use specific data. Oh, okay. So right now, there's nothing here but these folders. <coughs> What's that? No? All right. Anything that's inside a folder will not be read. So I'm going to drag this in, and we'll take a look at it. And then we're going to try it out. So here's your pattern. Here's your category with its pattern, hello. Here's the input. The output is hello there. Now we want the next one to point back to the first one. So we start out with this tag, SRAI, hello, an N tag. And now it points back to this one. And here's another way it will respond. If you say the word hi, it'll give you the same response, hello there. And I added another one, how's it going? Just like the prior one, it points back to the original over here. What's up? Again, pointing back to the original. And then there's what is up versus what's up. There's what's up 
You say, what's up? And that's about it. So this creates synonyms for the word hello. And each of these will point back here and give the same response. Now, since I changed the data, <coughs> I need to reinitialize arc. Okay, this tells me I had no syntax errors. If you have a syntax error, it'll show up here. We'll sh I'll show you that in a minute. Now I can say, now I can take a look at this and see why it's not working. I may have to reboot it. I'm sorry, what was the step to uh, reinitialize? I'll show you that in a minute. Okay. I think I changed microphones and it reset the microphone properties on me. It does that. Yes. Okay. To reinitialize and reread all of the AIML files, you click on the ellipse here, the three dots, and you click save. That's it. Fairly straightforward. Yeah, it worked. Hi. Is this where I say it worked at home? We'll try that again. Let me reset this. Now you guys can't see this. I got it on the wrong screen. Now you can see it. I'm going to go through that again. To reset it, you, you click on the three ellipses, the three dots, the ellipse, and then you click save. And you see success here. No syntax errors. All right. We're going to reset this thing because, I don't know, it's stuck and it doesn't want to listen to me. Initiating the known AIML code. It owns online. Hi. Hello there. How's it going? How's it going? How's it going? You can see Bing is being a little bit, how's it going? Bing is being a little bit problematic today. So we're just gonna leave that as is. So this is the symbolic reduction AI any questions on this before we move on? Well, Thomas, why is it having problems recognizing your voice every once in a while? Um, I could, I don't even want to debug that, but we'll take a quick look. I was just wondering because sometimes it seems like a cat says it fine, and other times, like, it doesn't even recognize what the ears just were just saying. Well, my computer looks like it's okay. My Windows manager is using 21% of the GPU. Alan, do you see any problems here? Thomas, could it be the, the little bit of echo we're hearing in your voice compared to last month? It could be the AI having difficult time deciphering what you're saying because of the little bit of echo. Yeah, voice recognition is very tricky. Placement. It could be. Alan, do you see any issues here with my task manager properties? Uh, nothing is obvious in the task manager, but there's there's a very limited sweet spot where 
we can hear you clearly, and I'm wondering if the voice recognition module is having the same challenge. Yeah, How far that, away is the microphone? I'm about 10 inches from the microphone. Might want to move a little closer, microphone a little closer to you, maybe. We could try it. I know it was when I had a robot that uh, was doing voice recognition and we had it rigged to a wireless microphone. So it was, it was like, microphone was like right here on my lapel, caught it fine all the time, but that's a different software I was using in TI voice recognition. I'm just checking my settings here. Is there a way you can just input text and just ignore the uh, recognition part? What we can do is it turn the microphone down again. This is a Windows issue. I keep turning it up. It keeps, look at that. It's well, your uh, microphone was uh, distorting. You were actually clipping. It was turned up too high. That could be. Yes. You turn down the volume from, the, from everybody else, too. I don't, Alan, do you know if we can adjust this so it doesn't auto adjust? It keeps trying to auto adjust. Uh, I've always left those at the standard for the past decade or so. Um, I don't think the problem is the sensitivity. I think it's the room acoustics. Oh, well, that could be. What room in the house are you in, Thomas? I'm in the, my dining room. It's very and, and you are distorting again, by the way. Yeah. So okay. okay, let's try that again. Test, test, test. Is that better or worse? Try that. But it just shifted by itself again, huh? Maybe if you turn down your microphone and get real close to it. Let's try it this way. It might be a manual. How are you? How are you? We're going to try it one more time after that. I'm going to enter it manually. Maybe your program just doesn't like you. That could be. Oh. It doesn't that. seem to work well with Zoom for some reason. Yeah, I turned down the volume again. I keep turning it up. It keeps turning it down. Well, it's you, you just distorted it again. So maybe it's up a bit high. Yeah, the problem is it's auto leveling, and that's what's it, why he sets it to one place and it goes back up because it's trying to keep it from distorting. Yeah. Problem is it's automatically moving up by itself, by itself. Like, and he can't seem to just you know put it there and let it stay there. You know. Test one two. Test one two. Yeah, it's auto adjusting. It should be good at where where it auto adjusts. I think would think. Yeah, except the uh, Google's uh, thing is not picking it up. I don't know. I think if you get closer to the microphone, it might help. The microphone's my camera. Oh my goodness! You'd have to get very close. You will look funny for a minute. Yeah, you'll be staring up my nose. It's not very comfortable. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know what the rest of you are hearing, but I hear a very loud echo in Thomas's voice. To, to me, it sounds not just only an echo, but um, it sounds like the highs are rolled off. The, uh, in other words, there's not a lot of trouble coming through. Could be. I was just able to do what you're doing there. And um, it was interesting. I had to put in what is up in the pattern. Because if I put what's up, it didn't work because the, the chat box converted, when I said what's up, it converted it to what is up. So it needed to match what is up. Did you encounter that? There's some um, built-in functions that convert things. I don't have a list of everything. We'll cover that in another class. So we yeah, have a large number of conversions that are going on behind the scenes. So yeah, do you you don't put uh, contractions in your pattern, perhaps, or like with it with is anyway, <laughs> or with two words. All right. Well, you get the idea anyway.
Let's try one more. If not, we move on. How's it going? How's it going? Let me try the other microphone. And set the microphones here. Test, test. <whistles> test, test. Test. You sound like a nice birdie. Hello. Hello again. How's it going? How's it going? Hello there. Okay, it worked. So switching microphones helped. Yay. I'm wondering right. if I'm wondering if a good idea would be to get like to automatic some uh, scrub the internet or scrub some sort of um conversation database and you could generate these generate AIML instead of typing it by hand you know that um that would be cool well there's a funny story there somebody at the Alice group took a number of Star Trek the original series recordings um well the scripts actually and they got everything that Captain Kirk was said and responded to and such like that. And they made an imitation Captain Kirk based on uh, TV scripts. It's very amusing. You should try it out. I don't have, could you look that up? The Captain Kirk uh, chat bot? Because that's kind of fun. Okay, moving on. So I also did some with C3PO. Let's take a look at those. But I want to change the voice. Hello. Oops. I put the pause on. Hello. Hello. Okay. Can you hear that? Yeah. It sounds vaguely British. So again, we're going to pull that file in, in the next file that is. I'm going to drag it into the AIML folder. So now we have two files here. So we're going to pull out the other one. And when I say hello next time, He'll say, hello, I am C-3PO, human cyborg relations. You notice I split up the word cyborg. That's because when it was together, it mispronounced it. So you might have to put in little tweaks like that so your, your uh, robot talks correctly. Your speech synthesis works right. Like the phonetic spelling. Yeah. So we'll reset this for the new AIML file. Hello. Try it again. Hello. Hello, I am C3PO Human Cyborg Relations. Not quite the original, but not bad, huh? So we're going to try another one. I have a synonym here for hey. Hey. Hello. I am C3 PO human cyborg relations. 
How's it going? Hello, I am C3 CEO Human Cyborg Relations. Now that gets a little redundant. We could actually take this and put in a random tag in here and have it select from, say, 10 or more different expressions instead of this original one here. Now, like I said, we can combine SA, SRAI and STAR, and we'll have expanded synonyms. And this would be example eight. I'm going to pull seven out. And replace it with eight. And reset. Arc. So now instead of just hello and hello there, we have hello star. And star will respond to hello something else. Hello cats, hello dogs, hello people. It's a wild card. But AIML1 requires both hello without a star and hello with a star. And again, I'm pointing it back to this response with the SRAI. So this actually will point back here. And then when I say, hey, robot, again, it points back to the same. How's it going, et cetera. So now he can answer a whole lot more questions without specifying it. Let's try that out. Hello, robot. Hello there. Hello, robot C3PO. Hello there. You can see it doesn't matter what I say after the word hello. All of it's picked up and referred back to the same response. Again, that can be a random number of responses. So we don't hear the same response every time. And that's the star. Any questions about that? So you only put it, yeah, you put that star in the, the pattern refer, well, that can be in any pattern, sounds like. Anything then, you want. And then you're, in this case, you're just referring back to the original, or you're, with the SRAI back to the, um, the first one. Yeah, so this way we can do a whole lot of a whole lot of copy and paste. What I sometimes do when I want to write a bunch of these, I'll take it like this. I'll put it all on one line. It doesn't care. Spaces are ignored. So I could do this, I could do a copy, paste, 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 and then put in like 10 variations, just changing the pattern each time. So does this ultimately allow me to extract parts of the spoken pattern? Um, like uh, like in our regular expression uh, group uh, so that I can respond 
by using parts of the uh, pattern. So instead of hello star, I'd say whatever star is, I want to count that as object. And then I would say, my name is not uh, insert object sort of thing. Yeah, we'll, we're going to get into capturing the reply. We, you want to see about capturing the uh, user's response, right? You want uh, to capture the pattern. Yes, I want to. And you want to capture the user's name or something like that, right? Am I? Yes, I want to actually, I want to do similar to a regular expression, pick up the group values and then uh, maybe write them to a blackboard and then have a sophisticated response that says, you know, if, you know, parameter one is equal to house and parameter three is equal to uh, run, then here's the response that I want. And a short answer, yes. The longer answer is something is what you're saying would be a little bit more complicated and it would involve both the uh, AIML bot plus some custom scripting. Very doable, but just more complicated. So I'm going to show you how to capture somebody's name in about two minutes here. So we're going to use the set and the get tags to set a variable and later get that variable. These uh, variables are sometimes in AIML called predicates. The syntax is simple. Um, we could say good night, username, Thomas, and then this, I'm sorry, this, whoops, this is not exactly correct. Let me get my file. This has actually got a syntax error. I'll show you a real one. Example nine. So set and get. I tell my robot, call me. And then the robot will thereafter store that name in a variable called username. And then I can bring that back later. So the first category is call me. I give the robot my name. And later on, I'm going to say good night. When I say good night, it's going to use the get tag and the variable username to say my name. Does that make sense, guys? Ladies? Set and get. Fairly straightforward. So where did it uh, resolve username as opposed to potato? Where did it get that value? Because username is something I would understand. We could call it dog, we could call it cat, we could call it anything we want. Oh, it's picking up star as the value. Just yeah. set in the name. Okay, I get that. That's our credit kit, that's our variable that we named. Okay, we're going to reload the AML bot, AIML bot software. And we're going to test it out. Call me Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Good night. Oops. Good night. Did you hear that? It did learn my name and now it's stored. It's stored in the variable that we called any name. Any questions about this? That uh, exclamation point seems un, uh, like it's not HT or not XML uh, compliant, unless I'm forgetting my XML. After we, that. 
the exclamation point after the star slash is that supposed to be there all right i guess it worked but it isn't it can be it doesn't matter oh is that just uh i see that's part of the hello whatever that's part of the string of the template Yes, and you could interpret it to add emphasis, but I haven't set that up. That's more complicated. I haven't got anything set up for emphasizing exclamations or questions. That's more deep. That's not a today task. So that was set and get. Any questions? Any more questions on set and get? Pretty interesting. You can teach your robot your name. Is there a way to escape, uh, make external calls with some of these values then? Yes, there is. Uh, in, an, in a very short explanation, when we receive something here, there's a script behind it. The script here is very simple. And at one point in time, I was having Simone call me honey. So that's what this is. <laughs> and sweetie, my wife didn't like that. It doesn't do that anymore. But this is where it says the command right here. The speech is stored in a variable called dollar bot response. If I wanted to exercise, to execute rather some code, I could put it here and say something like if Something like that. If bot response equals Joe, then do the following. So we can take the response that comes back from AIML and put some code to analyze it further. We can have it move motors. We can have it read sensors. We can have it make logical decisions of any sort. So if I wanted to do something in response to go get the fat red box, will the XML parse fat red and box as three separate things for me? Or do I get bot response and it's up to me to further sub parse it into fat red and box variables? You get the bot response bringing back a string of whatever you said, any, whatever number of words you said. You can split it up with an array. Any other questions? No, we'll move on. Could you show that one more, uh, the script one more time with the, um, uh, that you were working on? I was trying to read, I was trying to do this, but I couldn't quite. So it's pattern call, yeah, call me then hello. Uh, hello. You did it well. Oh, okay. I see. All right. No SRI in that one. No. Because we're, it's a different uh, input and output pattern, pair. Input is good night, the output is good night to you, and then the name. Right, so there's no SRIs in, in these at all, actually. <laughs> yes, there is down here. Oh, down there. And that brings up another point. This is 
This is in case it came out good night as one word. This is as two words. Bing will always give you the same response. It's a computer, it's a computer program. So this could be, this is probably redundant at this point. You could probably change this to say something like nighty night or something like that. And then, of course, we need the SRAI to point back to the original response, which is this, good night to you. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's do you know, good. Do you know what Porter stemming is? And what, what? Do you, have you heard the term Porter stemming? I'm not familiar with that expression. All right, so it's... Um, you might, uh, so Porter stemming takes a group of related words and returns the, the common root of it. So uh, ran, run, running, uh, things like that. So search engines use this. So uh, it, it prevents you from having to create a thousand different patterns for a common root word sort of thing. So I was wondering if this thing supports this or as far as you know, it just has to, you have to put in all the different run, running, ran, uh, or there are some words that have many uh, variants for the same stem. As it stands now, you're right. You have to put it, the, uh, the pattern in a hundred times if you have a hundred variations. Um, you could write code to do exactly what you're saying, borrow somebody's algorithm and stick it in and it would work for you, I'm sure. It does allow you to expand, but it's not built in. Any other questions? Yeah, Thomas. Um, Hi. This is Buzz. Um, Hi, Buzz. So I missed what you actually do in order to um, parse a, a recognized command, let's say, into a uh, code that would actually drive uh, various sensors, motors, you know, actuators, whatever it is. Um, could you just uh, very briefly um, illuminate how that's done again? Sure. And again, we can do it again here. So in your AIML bot skill, you hit the three ellipses and that brings you up to a configuration window. In this configuration window, you have further configuration, including a script that will run every time. This script I'm going to delete this since I don't use it anymore. This so, list. so the, the, the parsed words that you use or phrase that you use um, brings up a pre-programmed script of some sort then, and you have to, um, well, you're doing it manually, but I assume that this could be automated in some way? Well, yeah. The, well, let's say, for instance, we just said, good morning. Now the phrase good morning is stored in the variable dollar bot response. Now we can parse that out. And from my understanding, there's just one script that is applied. There isn't one script for each category. There's one script that is applied. Your scripts can call scripts, and those scripts can call other scripts. But this is where it all starts, right here. After the response comes back to this skill, you have to parse out the response. And we would use some sort of a um, Okay, I, under, I understand that so far. So the alpha 
um, would be uh, a word or possibly even a phrase within the bot response then? Well, now it's a phrase. That you've, that you've actually spoken to the robot. Yes. And then we can do things like we can move motors. We can, uh, here, servo digital one. Um, yeah, understood. Uh, with a, yeah, without yeah, going through all the gory servo to position 100. Yeah, the, the, what I was looking for was um, the linkage between um, the identification of some kind of identifier such as your alpha and the bot response then would be sort of like an input pad from your voice recognition then I take it. Yes, yes, bot response comes from voice recognition. Okay, that, so that, that's the linkage that I was missing. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Yeah, bot response is a global variable. It's available in any script you write. But this is there's only one script here for the whole uh, the whole thing, really, right? I mean, well, we're running actually more than one script. We're running this one here. I'm going to delete this, or it's going to give me an error. And by the way, this is what how it's pronouncing the responses. It's the command say wait. I noticed there's this like mine just said say, and I think say wait waits until it's done speaking right that's a synchronous right. versus asynchronous say will just start speaking and continue with the script while it's speaking right it won't do anything until it stops speaking and and i like to do that so i don't get anything unpredictable also we have this control command and this is what I'm doing to pause it from listening so I can talk to you without the robot trying to understand every word I'm saying. Because I'm not giving it a, um, a uh, what do you call those words a, that they use to get the robot's command like Alexa or? You mean wake up word? Wake up word, thank you, couldn't remember it. I'm not giving it a wake up word so it's listening to everything. Ideally, at the next stage of this for a real robot would be give it a wake up word and leave it on as long as it's seeing somebody's face. If it doesn't see a face or specifically eyes, I want it to look for eyes. If it doesn't see the eyes looking exactly at it, I want it to ignore the uh, person unless it hears the wake up word, more like humans do. And that can be done inside of art. For easy robots. But what I meant was like that that script is for this whole AML. I mean, that there's only when you click that ellipsis, there's only one script for this instance of AML bot, right? Right. They have, I'm giving it a different script. They can have its own script too. And a matter of fact, Bing has its own script here. And it's only one line. I'm not using these other ones. The, oh, by the way, pound here means uh, comment. You can see it's grayed out. In this, we're setting, we're sending the phrase over to the AML bot still. You see that? So we're setting the phrase from Bing speech over to AML bot. There's also another script I have over here. And again, these are really tiny. They're only doing one or two things. And there's other ways to do it, but this is the way I did it. Here I am sending a phrase to AMOBOT to know that it's me talking to it when I started up. It's not recognizing my name, my uh, speech. It's not recognizing my face. I'm just telling it Thomas is here. And therefore it's setting some parameters so it can identify me. So Thomas, using your bot response and your example of alpha, um, 
let's say that you had um, five different scripts, you could write after that if and then statement, put in a, um, a random generator and just randomly select a script, which would then go to and do like turn left on every time you set alpha or it might um, it might turn left the first time might turn right another time might go randomly um, a third time go back to some other thing but you could actually um, th this opens up lots of different possibilities for uh, behavioral uh, control of a robot actually through voice um, commands it does it does there's a lot of things you can do here all right, moving on. Well, one question that the, the uh, I'm sorry, it's kind of a little confusing, but bot, bot response, isn't that what, that's what the bot is responding uh, to you with, right? I mean, so that's what it's going to say. Yeah, bot response. So, I mean, in other words, if you say, uh, hello, you know, you say hello, and then it's going to say, um, hi there. Bot response is hi there, right? Bot response is hi there, right. This is, what it's this is what's uh, returned. This is the right. response. So you're, when you say if bot response something, you're, you're, uh, you're, you know, you're checking what the bot responded with. You're right. Uh, That's the so wrong variable. Yeah, it's not what you said, right? That's different. I mean, uh, yes. you, you caught Jim. me. I would, I would have had a bad syntax, a bad error there. Yeah, bad logical error. I should have used um, Bing speech. There's the right variable. I mean, you yeah. could you could use that if you wanted to know what the robot said, but yeah. Anyway, the proper yeah, variable would have been Bing speech. I got that wrong. You caught me. Very good. Yeah. Thanks for catching that for me. Yeah, Jim, you brought up the, an important point on that, and um, you're absolutely right. You need to have uh, what I was referring to was receiving from the human input commands and then guiding the robot in different ways. Um, but you're right, the bot response, you could also, you know, incorporate that as well if that made sense to particular responses, too. Lots of variable possibilities. But yeah, yeah, because, yeah. You were, you're right. It would have been if um, Bing speech, not bot response, but Bing speech. I would be, and you know what? I'd like to change that to Bing input or in just input, speech input. Bot input, something like that to make it more sense. I mean, you know what you could do is you could use the um, bot response um, you know, because generally what you've done with your many uh, references is you're, you're interpreting multiple things the, the person said and mapping them to a single response. So you could then only have to check if bot response equals this, then you know the person said any, uh, this one of those possible uh, things, they all kind of funnel. So if you, that's useful. If you, so you don't have to repeat your code. If you, if you just want to know, well, did any of these uh, things, the various variants were said and the bot was going to respond with this. And then you check that and do something, right? Yeah. Or so you can check the actual, what the person said, uh, uh, you know, to, if you want to narrow down more specifically, but in general, you're going to have many things that the person, many var variants the person might say uh, that map to a single thing. Uh, and, and then, well, and then, yeah, you could do something based on that. Yeah. So this is the way the if statement should work. Or else if, you know, you can go else if, else if, else if. Any other questions before I get out of here? No more? Okay. 
I'm going to leave this code here just in case. One thing it doesn't have is a comment block. You have to do each line separately. One of the one of the things that I find a, a little bit more um, well intimidating about this system is that you kind of have to. Um, it seems like you have to accept it or buy in to the whole thing because I can't mix, say, some uh, Arduino IDE code. <laughs> you Not know, here, but you could. You could trigger Arduino IDE code. You ah. can it to an Ar Arduino or Raspberry Pi. With this. Okay, so you can't. So your the Windows app say is running, doing all this stuff, and then um, you could connect it to your own uh, Arduino code, essentially. That's right. Or Raspberry Pi. You can read sensors and uh, you can send commands to motors. Anything you can do normally. Any you can trigger any one of any commands. You're communicating over. Uh, Oh, is it I squared C? It might be I squared C, I forget. Okay, right. So when like the, like in that list of commands you had there where it said servo this and you know all those different ones, um, if there was something that wasn't there, then uh, you, there's a way to get, those are just easy script functions, but um, they're not maybe. Yes, these require the easy robot board. Ah. Okay, so you you may not have to. You don't have Arduino. There's a special set for Arduino. Okay, perfect. That answers that. Are, we're not going into tonight because I don't have that at my fingertips. Well, that's good to know, though. Yeah, it's a lot smaller than this library. A lot smaller. Well, well, as long as you can tie in, like send a, if you can send a, a some a string a, some kind of serial data, then, then you could make your own Arduino stuff. But I guess, yeah, see, it, it makes sense to buy into the easy system, easy script or easy robot if you, um, if you want to use all these convenient commands. Or if you have something that already runs on Arduino, you can use this as the higher brain and use the other stuff as the lower brain, you know, the brain stem and all that. Yeah, that's, and then you don't, then you could just send it I squared C commands, basically. That's right. That's right. Okay, perfect. That's so, yeah, you don't have to buy a easy, you know, uh, robot hardware to use this. Right. And it's not that expensive. Uh, an easy robot board costs about a little under $100. And it runs on uh, seven to 16 volts, I think. Um, they say they're hard to burn out, but I've burned out one already. Uh, but we won't go into that. Let's finish on this. Anything more here? Because I'm going to shut this, this part off. Yeah, bottom line, Thomas, is this looks like basically a, um, a verbal interface uh, that you could use either internally in the robot or to the outside world, to other devices if necessary. But it's really a, a communication interface with... Um, in this case, the English language, basically. Uh, it gives you more than that. It gives you uh, face recognition, um, object classification. It's giving you now uh, YOLO. Uh, oh yeah, with skills. all the with all the other skills, it's um, it, it's yeah, the, the other crossroads skills. for all the other skills. Those are other skills. Okay. So the next tag we're going to be talking about is the tag called that. That retrieves the last template output, the last output that the chatbot gave you. And we're going to use that for yes and no questions. AIML retains the last pattern 
the last input so it can be used in a follow-up category. And it uses that, the, the tag called that, to link them together. Here's the example. The pattern or input is, I like movies. The response, the output is, do you like comedy movies? If the answer is yes, it's going to reply, I like comedy movies too. If the answer is no, it's going to say, no, comedy movies are the best. The way we're linking this all together is with the tag called that. Start and end tag here. So this links it back to the last template, the last response that AIML returned. Okay, so let's try this out. I like movies. Do you like comedy movies? Yes. I like comedy movies too. Now, the response it just had is, is it's keeping is I like comedy movies too. This was the last reply. So if I say no, it will ignore me. Or if I say yes again, it will it will or should ignore me. Let's try that. No. See, it didn't respond because it's not the last thing it said. It's looking for the last thing it said. And the last thing it said is, I like comedy movies too. So we need to start all over again based on the code that's here. I like movies. Do you like comedy movies? Yes. I like comedy movies too. Do you like comedy? Try that again. I like movies. Do you like comedy movies? No. 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 Comedy are the best. So you see, it went to that second response here. But only if the last thing that was said was, do you like comedy movies? This is, this is the um, contextual. And it's short-term contextual because it's just list, keeping track of the last thing that was responded, the last response that came back from the software. Questions? Anybody? No, that seems pretty clear. It's good. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah, that's good. I mean, that's pretty cool. Um, it's a way to start. A, it's a way to do a little more than just a query response. You can have a little conversation. <laughs> yeah, you could have it. You could start making what they call um, conversation trees, and we're going to talk about that. Do you so like conversation trees, I'm sorry? No, go ahead, I'm sorry. That's okay. Conversation trees with that, with the tag that. So these are some I picked off, off the web. These are copy pasted. So, so you tell the robot, you don't look like you're from around here. And our response could be, I lived here all my life. And you must know Mr. Bowler. 
who, and you see, it can follow any one of these paths. And with the tag called that, you can do something like this. Or, wonderful, we have some times available. Which suits you? 6 p.m. Excellent, great, thank you. This kind of thing for business. Or there's a welcome message. They can do anyone, they can, they're asked, do they want to check what's new? Do they want to place an order? Do they want to check status? And then another conversation tree for business this time again. And they can get really complicated, these conversation trees, and go back and forth between different pieces and subjects and matter. And let's see an example of that one. So in this conversation, we're going to start off, is it going to rain? The response will be, do you like rain? If the user says yes to the response, do you like rain? The next thing it'll respond with is, do you carry an umbrella? Now that we have a level two response. And if the answer is yes to the question, do you carry an umbrella? The answer would be, oh, that's good. Never any fun getting wet. And then we have the no response. Do you like rain? No, but the plants need rain. And then a level two, do you carry an umbrella? Then you know, then you might get wet. And these can go deep and wide. Hey, one question about the syntax for questions. Uh, I, uh, how, you know, usually when you put a question mark at the end, the, um, uh, the voice synthesizer uh, inflects properly, but these don't have that, um, even in the template, the response, they don't have a question mark. Wouldn't you recommend a question mark? Wouldn't that sound, does that affect, doesn't that affect the, uh, intonation? I don't think it does. Let's give it a try because I'm not sure right now. Or on, on better ones it will. <laughs> How are you? How are you? No, it didn't. Guess not. Not on the... Let's try an exclamation point. How are you? It ignores that too. Yeah, because in some cases you wouldn't miss, I guess, yeah, I guess with people you can always tell it's a question because it's got how, what, when, where, what, how, or do you or something, but it's nicer to have the full inflection or the intonation. It is, and you don't know sometimes, so, there's another improvement you, you could make. Yeah. All right, well, here, we'll go back to this example. I gotta reload that code. Is it going to rain? Do you like rain? No. You see that interpreted it wrong. It has now instead of no. Is it going to rain? Do you like rain? No. No, but all the plants need rain. Is it going to rain? Do you like rain? Yes. Do you carry an umbrella? 
No. No. Then you might get very wet. So you can see how that works really well when you have these long conversation trees. Excuse me a second. I need to close the door. My wife just got back from the store. Any questions on this before we move on? Uh, one thing to note here, you said something earlier about comments. If you'll notice in the code you have up here, if you start with the angle bracket and then the uh, exclamation point dash dash, that is a comment. Yes, that is a comment. Yeah, and you have to end it with, with a dash dash. Dash dash angle bracket, yeah. And that's common that's with all HTML. And I think even YML uses the same syntax. Yeah, this is yeah. XML and any of the MLs. I'm sorry? Anything most else? of the most of the ML, most of the markup languages uh, derive from XML. Yeah. I just wanted to comment that. I got to go, guys. I'll see you later. Bye bye. Okay, bye bye. And yeah, we're running a little late. Um, all right, why don't we stop here? We'll continue this next month. Oh, but yeah, I that's wanted to fine. comment on something. Can I do that? Oh, the, sure, go ahead. The, the voice sounds, uh, the synthesized voice uh, sounds very similar to the voice in Zardoz, if anybody's ever seen that movie, the voice of the, uh, the computer there. Oh, is that a good movie, Zardoz? Huh? Oh, it's one of my favorite scientific uh, science fiction movies. Oh, really? It, uh, it starred uh, Sean Connery in one of his uh, early roles. Oh, really? Wow. Definitely. Highly recommended. Okay, guys. Nice visiting with you. Thank you for, thank you for a very interesting uh, uh, meetup type meeting. All right. We're going to continue. Well, you're welcome. Next month, if you want it again, I've got a few more things to teach you if you want to learn some more of this. Yay. I'm out for today. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye. Yeah, all right. Well, uh, <clears throat> thank you, Thomas, for a very enlightening. And uh, it's very, it's, it's a, there's a lot to learn with this uh, in, in creating a chat system. Uh, and it, it's all, you know, so this is, uh, it's good knowledge to, to have to do that. And um, so we'll uh, wrap up for tonight. And in two weeks, we'll have a, um, uh, our show and tell. Uh, on the uh, fourth Friday. And so um, I'll, I hopefully will have my videos done. I think I'm gonna record videos. Uh, a very easy way to do it is to record your videos ahead of time. And we actually prefer that. Uh, you can do more sophisticated demos with, and not have any problems really. Um, live demo is the most challenging. Uh, which uh, is, you know, okay, especially if you have robots running around, like um, sometimes we've seen, but, but uh, definitely the re recording with your phone and then you just play them and it's, it's really, really quite uh, smooth that way. But either way, we'll look forward to presentations of what everybody's working on. Um, yeah, I have my big orange robot. It's, I've got a Xbox 360 Connect on there now, and I was doing depth sensing with it. It's got a screen. So I'm looking forward to showing that off. I'm gonna show something too, yeah. Oh, and Mitch, how you doing? Hi, everybody. Yeah, yeah well, good. Uh, I, I'm experimenting with the LiDAR and my walking robot. It's able to scan about 90 degrees and see the depth up to six meters. And I, uh, I'm visualizing that in processing. Oh, yeah. it's, fun. it's not too, too sophisticated, but it's fun. So Neato. That. yeah, we'll see that. I mean, we'll definitely look forward to that. But so thanks everybody for attending. Uh, and we'll see you well, in two weeks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.